Thank you all so much for taking the time to be here. So everyone, let us all begin. So good evening, everyone, and welcome. Tonight, we have the opportunity to come together to celebrate Bristol Community College alumni who are working so hard and contributing to our community in all kinds of ways. So if you don't know me, my name is Steve Martins, and I am grateful and blessed to be a Master of Ceremonies for Bristol Awards here tonight. Um, many of you know my story, but it started with me here at Bristol on my way to a bachelor's degree, and I am so forever grateful, like many of you in this room, for what I have learned here in this room. I am so happy to be helping us honor those fine alumni, alumni here tonight. As many of you know, there are more than 35,000 alumni who have completed certificates or associate degrees since Bristol opened its doors on Durfee Street in 1965. Countless more have transferred on their way to a bachelor's degree. When Bristol celebrated its 50th anniversary, it inaugurated this awards event to recognize that Bristol graduates are truly a gift to our wonderful community. So later this evening, you will learn more about the six honorees. They represent what is possible when students invest in their future at Bristol. So we begin this special presentation for you, a Shakespearean meditation on theater. Please welcome the director of Bristol's new theater program, David Ledoux, and student actors, Leandra Booth, Taylor Corbett, Monica Harford, Brianna Rosario, and Jordan Smith. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is David Ledoux. I am the theater coordinator here at the theater program. And uh, students here, we have put a little something together for you that we're very excited about. These are all pieces from Shakespearean plays uh, where Shakespeare was having his characters discuss theater and what theater is. Uh, so I think you'll recognize some of these pieces. Some of them may be a surprise to you. But uh, please give a warm welcome to our student theater actors here at Bristol. Anything so overdone is from the purpose of 
plays. Whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as it were the mirror up to nature. Send the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act in monarchs, to behold the swelling scene. But pardon, gentle souls, oh pardon, and let us, sightless to this great account, on your master and horses work. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Then, when we talk of horses, that you see them printing their brown books in the receiving bird. It is your thoughts that must now take our kings. Carry them here and there, jumping o'er time, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hour's test. Is all the world a stage, and all the men and women merely players? They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Wow. And then the whining schoolboy with his sashes <laughs> and shiny horny face, creeping like a snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like Vernon, with the woeful ballad made to his mistress, Ivor. And then a soldier. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's give them another round of applause. They are so talented. That was great. And if all of you were interested in more, we hope that you can attend the premier main stage production of the College's Theatre Program. Bristol's, uh, Bristol's William Shakespeare's Midsummer Night Dream will run at the end of the month from April 25 to the 27th at 8 p.m. in the Jackson Arts Center. We hope you can attend and support our new theater program. Also, we are so fortunate that Bristol has so many great partnerships. For tonight's partner organizations, we thank Argosy Collegiate Chartered School and Hadley Insurance Group. Your generosity is appreciated and we are so grateful for your support. So I invite everyone to enjoy your salads. I know many of you are eating or probably done by now and probably hungry, so I'm, I'm sure this will be a short part of the ceremony. 
but during the next part of the program, I know she does not need any introduction. She has certainly hit the ground running. Please welcome our fourth president of Bristol Community College, Dr. Laura L. Douglas. Well, welcome everyone. It is so great to see you here uh, celebrating this wonderful occasion. Thank you for coming out tonight to celebrate Bristol Community College alumni who, who are making our community stronger and more vibrant every day. You must be so proud of your friends and families who we're honoring this evening. I know that I am. We are fortunate to have each other and a strong sense of commitment to the people we live and work among. I'd like to say a few words about Steve Martins, who graciously agreed to serve as our Master of Ceremonies this evening. The son of Portuguese immigrants, Steve was the first in his family to earn a high school diploma. While attending Bristol Community College, he was elected to the Student Senate and served as Vice President. Steve told me that while serving in the Student Senate, he took Government 51 and 52, and that was when he knew he wanted a career in public service. Steve went on to earn a bachelor's degree and in his senior year launched his first campaign for a seat on the New Bedford City Council. On November 7, 2007, he was elected as one of the youngest city councilors in New Bedford's history. He served as city council president in 2012 and completed a decade on the council before electing in the fall of 2017 that he would not run for re-election. He has held positions with the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development, Bristol County Retirement Service, and is now working for Massachusetts State Treasurer Deb Goldberg as the Assistant Director and Regional Manager at the Massachusetts State Lottery Commission. Steve continues to be active at the college, serving on the New Bedford Business Advisory Board and taking part in numerous events. Thank you, Steve, for your service to our community and to our college. In its 54-year history, Bristol has grown from a one-building campus offering a small number of traditional associate degrees to a five-location multi-building institution providing a wide array of career and academic opportunities throughout southeastern Massachusetts. That growth is a tribute to this community and the many supporters of education among us. The degree that you receive at Bristol Community College results in good paying jobs that enable the hopes and the dreams of our graduates and will support them and their families for decades to come. Each person honored tonight is a symbol of what is possible with a college education. They represent themselves, all Bristol alumni, and the success of this college. Each of you, Paul, Jackie, Liz, Nancy, Roger, Susan, have used your education to make a better life for yourselves, your families, and your community. It's a pleasure to showcase your accomplishments. Thank you to the Bristol Co Community College Foundation Board of Directors, the Bristol Alumni Association, and the Bristol Awards Committee for working together to make this fantastic event a success. We work together with pride, and we lean on you for advice and guidance. Thank you for your dedication. In recognition of your efforts on behalf of your alma mater, I invite the Bristol Awards Committee to stand as we applaud your efforts that have culminated in this wonderful celebration. Please stand. Thank you so much. 
I'd also like to recognize some of the people who are here tonight and who said steadfastly advocate for this college. President Emeritus Jack Spraga and his wife, Joanne Spraga. <laughs> the members of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, Joan Madero's chair and Lynn Malisey. Also with us tonight are members of the Bristol Community College Foundation Board of Directors, Tom Murray, President, <laughs> Carol Michael, Peter Silva, there we are, Don Smith, and Alex Stylos. I'd also like to recognize members of Bristol's Alumni Association Steering Committee, Carol Michael Chair, way back in the corner, <laughs> Joanne Brialt, Cindy Flanagan, Lynn Malisey, and Steve Martins. <laughs> Phil Oliveira, Ed Sousa, and Rick Taylor. Thank you very much. And we are grateful to have so much support from our elected officials. Some have indicated that they may be coming along a bit later, so if you do not see them uh, wave or stand up now, please give them hello, a hello when you see them. Uh, but here tonight is Speaker Pro Tem, Pat Haddad. Senator Michael Rodericks, <laughs> Representative Carol Fiola, and Representative Paul Schmidt. Some of you may be fortunate enough to have students at your tables. Uh, Bristol students have been sponsored by the Alumni Association and some are guests of our awardee, Liz Razy. These students can share the good news of Bristol with you. We hope meeting our award winners, students, I hope you're listening. We hope that meeting these award winners, their families and friends will help our current students dream big as they contemplate their own futures. Bristol students, would you please stand to be recognized? I'm sure we'll see them maybe within the next 10 years receiving awards at our Paragon event. And of course, we must acknowledge the spectacular efforts of our culinary arts program under the direction tonight of Chef Martinez. Let's give our students and chef a hand. So please enjoy your evening. We will begin our award presentation after the dinner service. Thank you. All right, we have an exciting night ahead. We have some great honorees ready to be honored. All of you should be full from such a delicious meal. Many of you are digging in into your desserts. Feel free to dig into your desserts if it's standing in front of you. I don't know how many of you lasted this long with that dessert in front of you. I know many were eating well beforehand, like my mom, but I won't, uh, I won't single her out. So eat the desserts, please, through this process. If you're still eating, please feel free to do so. Um, we are now going to begin this special ceremony and honor these great honorees. So the first award is the Maury Cousinitz Volunteer of the Year Award. As many of you know, Maury was a big fan of Bristol Community College and his legacy lives on in this award. It will be presented by his granddaughter, Tara Cousinitz. Please welcome Tara Cousinitz. Okay. 
this year's recipient of the 2019 Mari Cousinitz Volunteer of the Year Award is Liz Razi. Liz came to Bristol with a plan to apply to the nursing program. In the end, she discovered a second career, though not as the nurse she imagined. Instead, she became a supplemental instructor, making a world of difference for our Bristol students. Liz explained that the meeting the course challenges in Professor Joseph Lavazzi's anatomy and physiology class inspired her to help her fellow students achieve their own success and confidence in this very class. This experience caused her to reevaluate her initial plan. Instead of applying to the nursing program, she decided to help younger students as a volunteer, supplementary instructor, and tutor, thereby having a far greater impact on healthcare and on the lives of social students and their families. Liz calls it her loves and fishy stories. Tara, would you like to present the award to Liz, please? Thank you so much, Tara, and once again, congratulations to Liz. The next award is the Distinguished African American Alumna of the Year Award. This award has been given by the college for over 20 years to an alumna or alumnus who has demonstrated professional success and service to their community. The recipient of the 2019 Distinguished African American Alumna of the Year Award is Jacqueline Haskett Anfield. <laughs> After graduation from high school, Jackie put her organization and clerical skills to work, serving as a legal secretary in Fall River and Boston. But then Jackie wanted more, and she earned her associate in secretarial science in 1984 and walked across the stage with her mom, who was graduating as well. She raised two daughters and eventually came to work part-time in the Bristol Community College Foundation office. She immersed herself in the life of the college, volunteering to help with fundraising efforts. She was a regular at the Benefit Golf Tournament as well as at the annual gala. Jackie demonstrates her commitment to Bristol and the community by attending the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Breakfast yearly, which I'm sure many of you have been. But Jackie has been 15 times. In addition to serving Bristol, Jackie has made a big impact on her church, Bethel AME, where she has served as trustee and sat on nearly every committee. She was church, school teacher, and superintendent. Jackie earned her bachelor's degree from Bridgewater State University and works as a special education teacher. Congratulations, Jackie. We are also pleased to have selected three alumni service award winners from a host of nominations, and this was very hard. These distinguished members of the Bristol alumni base have careers, families, and service records of which they, we can be very all very proud of. Susan Marati Black, Nancy Durfee, and Roger St. Martin, please join me.
Susan's here. You came with a fan base, all right. <laughs> Susan was a pioneer at Bristol Community College. She was the only female graduate in the electro, electrical, manical, I'm sorry, manic, mechanical technology when she earned her associate's degree in 1979. Her first career was in engineering design work in the medical and automotive fields. Today, Susan is an educator and teacher leader at BMC Durfee High School, where she teaches engineering and mentors new teachers. She also provides project-based learning in the engineering capstone using the Project Lead the Way based curriculum. Bristol gave Susan the opportunity to learn about the field of underwater robotics, and she has come full circle to serve as a member of the Bristol Community College Engineering Advisory Board. She has volunteered many years with the May ROV and VEX Robotics Competition Program. Susan earned her Bachelor's of Science in Manufacturing Technology from Eastern Michigan State University, and most recently received her Master's of Science Occupational Education from Fitchburg State University. Please join me in congratulating Susan. Nancy, if you could please step forward. So Nancy stayed local after gradu graduation and worked in, in a variety of jobs while raising her small children. Eventually, Nancy decided to invest in her and her children's future by enrolling at Bristol Community College. She has said that Bristol's experience was life-changing. Nancy earned her Associate of Science in Environmental Engineering from Bristol in 1998. Today, Nancy serves the town of Somerset as its first town planner. She is overseeing the MassWorks Infrastructure Program Grant, the Comprehensive Master Plan, and is involved with several, several other projects. She grew up in Somerset on the Taunton River, and is very proud to be working to steward the natural and economic resources of the area. Nancy has mentored Bristol single parent students through a collaboration with the Women's Fund. Nancy received her Bachelor's of Science Environmental Ge Geography from Bridgewater State University. Please join me in congratulating Nancy. And Roger, if you can please step forward. In 1986, Roger used his GI Bill to attend Bristol Community College. His professor, Ray Lavertu, suggested that he take the firefighter exam. He passed and was hired by the Fall River Fire Department in 1987 and ascended the ranks to his current position of Deputy Fire Chief and the city fire marshal. Roger assumed the role of grant writer and secured more than $20 million in federal and state grant money for the Fall River Fire Department. Roger is a founding member of the Fallen 
Fall River Firefighters Memorial Scholarship Committee, which has awarded more than $120,000 in scholarship to date. He is an active, he is very active in many professional organizations. Roger and his wife, Elizabeth, were foster parents, get this, to seven children of varying ages before their daughter, Nicole, and son, Joshua, were born. He completed his Bachelor's of Science in Fire Science from Columbia Southern University in 2007 and is now enrolled in the Organizational Leadership Master's Program at Waldorf University. Please join me in congratulating Roger. And now I would like to introduce a special woman who many of you all know, Joan Medeiros, Chair of the Board of Trustees to present the Paragon Award. As many of you know, Joan is the first woman appointed by the governor, I'm surprised it took this long, <laughs> to serve as the Chair of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees. She is Vice President of Commercial Lending at Bristol County Savings Bank. Joan is an accomplished professional and dedicated member of the community, serving on numerous boards. Joan nominated Paul Burke for the Paragon Award. Please welcome Joan. Thank you, everyone. So Paul, please come and join me at the stage. So Paul, let me start by saying this. You and I have known each other for many years. We've served on some committees together. And on about an annual basis, we'll get together for lunch and you know, talk about all that's going on in our communities. And a year or so ago, we had lunch, and it had been shortly after I had been appointed as chair. And as we finished lunch, Paul said to me, if not for Bristol, I don't know where I'd be today. And that just completely touched me. And that means so much, and I think that represents so many of our Bristol students. So with that, congratulations on being named our 2019 Paragon Award winner. The award is the most distinguished award for an alumnus of Bristol Community College. You are a community leader who has demonstrated a loyal interest in the college over the years. In building a business, you have helped grow our local economy and your volunteer efforts have truly made a difference in the greater Fall River area. Although your efforts and accomplishments are way too long to list here, I'd like to highlight a couple. Most importantly, you continue to demonstrate your commitment to education in your role as chair of the board and the foundation at the Agassiz Collegiate Charter School. And I know there are people here from Agassiz to support you in this. I serve on the foundation board with you, and I have seen firsthand how committed you are to ensuring that the children in our community are provided a first-rate education. You also serve on the board of the Narrow Center for the Arts, and your past leadership at the Bristol County Chamber of Commerce has helped to grow that organization. Your professional accomplishments are also many. The insurance build business you built, Hadley Insurance Group, is a profitable local business, adding economic vitality to the city of Fall River. And given how many are here from HIG, I suspect it's also a great place to work. So thank you for being here to support Paul today. You have been a great resource for other insurance professionals with your leadership at the Massachusetts Association of Insurance Agents in the classes that you teach. Lastly, 
You also have provided ongoing service to your hometown of Swansea. You've served as the town meeting moderator for many years, you've been a selectman, and you have dedicated work with the Swansea Ambulance Corps. You have also represented Swansea firefighters and EMTs and services for fallen heroes at Ground Zero. I know that you tell people that Bristol Community College is where you learn to learn, but tonight, Bristol is honored to acknowledge your accomplishments. Paul Burke, congratulations. We are so honored to have you as our 2019 Paragon Award winner. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. I gotta find my words here, sorry. Uh, I am humbled and honored uh, for this recognition. Uh, the support of so many people has made this possible. My wife, Donna, has always supported me from the very beginning. When we were married, I was already a firefighter, town moderator, there were many nights that I got home late from meetings, running out to house fires, dinners, uh, you name it, I would left her there, uh, and calling her once in a while from the hospital just in, on occasion. Then I got involved in the Chamber of Commerce, chaired the Legislative Affairs Committee, uh, and went through the chairs and became chair of the chamber in 2007 and Fall River Celebrates America. Uh, then came so many other boards and committees I was involved with. Um, I was already teaching for MAIA, uh, and I joined their board, Swansea Ambulance Corps, FROED, the Battleship, um, South Coast Development Partnerships, Center for Marketing Research, Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, the Narrow Center for the Arts, and the Anthony Quinn Foundation. Uh, right now, Chair of the Argosy uh, Collegiate Charter, uh, Board of Trustees, and their foundation. On top of that, when I finished my years at the chamber, I decided it was time to go back to school and get my EMT license. And I volunteer on Friday nights for the fun of it. Uh, and then I started getting, uh, working on my pilot's license when I finished with my EMT license. I'm not sure there's many more I can do, but um, I want to thank you. I love you for your patience, and I appreciate the time you've given me. My stepson, Mark, and his wife, Ashley, are here, and my granddaughter, Eileen. Thank you so much for your love and support, and my brother, Jay and Robbie, who have always supported me throughout my entire life. I want to thank them also for their love and support. And my brother and sister-in-law, Paul and Denise Bonang, are here. And I want to thank them. It's always a good sign when the in-laws want to come and visit, right? <laughs> I've been blessed my entire life with people that have taken care of me and supported me. My parents who brought me up in a wonderful neighborhood where there are lots of kids my age and their, their parents who treated us all as their own. I think my mom and dad would be proud today if they were here. When you're a kid, you don't always understand the decisions your parents make that impact your lives, uh, the lives of their children when preparing them to be adults. Uh, all the opportunities that come their way as a result. I know their decision to build a home in South Swansea was one of those. I have lifelong friends as a result. Tom and Margot Cottrell are like a second mother and father to me. Who would have thought when we were kids that we'd be living next door uh, to them now. I can't thank them enough for their love and support over the last 60 some years. Uh, and taking advantage of those opportunities, in some cases passing on opportunities that came my way, brought me here to BCC. Swansea schools were on double sessions when I entered the eighth grade. Eighth and ninth grades were 12.15 in the afternoon to 6.30 at night. I actually had a job in the morning helping our milkman make the deliveries. He'd pick me up at 5 a.m., believe it or not, Drop me off at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I get a dollar a day and a chocolate milk. <laughs> An opportunity I could take advantage of because I wasn't in school in the mornings. On my first day in eighth grade, my English teacher made me sit right in the front of her desk. <laughs> she wanted to make sure I paid attention in class, and at the time I thought she was just picking on me. But my grades weren't the best coming out of seventh grade. Uh, and she didn't want me goofing off in the back of the class, which I probably would have. 
I also had a math teacher who asked me why I was in his remedial math class when I found it to be so easy. I just told him, that's where they put me. So he had me take an extra algebra class with him, and I ended up passing both of them. I took advantage of that opportunity and passed both. At the start of ninth grade, my guidance counselor asked me what I wanted to do for work when I got out of high school. I told him I planned on going to college. My grades weren't the greatest, and actually, they were kind of poor. And he said, I should pick a trade because I wasn't smart enough to go to college. Being on double sessions certainly didn't help, but I didn't pay attention to him, and when I got my class schedule, I changed it so I could get the classes I needed. And the next three years were the morning sessions. It started at 6.10 a.m. and finished at noon. Uh, my, my last class was a study in my junior year, and I got a job at McCurry's department store here in Fall River. I worked there for five years. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a morning person, and my first class at 6.20 a.m. was math. I really struggled with my grades, but I was convinced, however, college was possible. This was the late 60s and early 70s, and Vietnam was on TV every night. They started the draft, and the only way you couldn't get drafted is if you went to college. And I didn't, uh, if I didn't go to college, I was going into the Navy, and I don't think I was ready for the armed services, so maybe that's why I wanted to go to college so bad. So even with fair at best grades, in my senior year, I applied to UMass Amherst, Southeastern Massachusetts University, some of us remember that as SMU, the Stockbridge School in Amherst and BCC. Not surprisingly, I got turned down at UMass uh, Amherst and SMU, but I did get accepted at the Stockbridge School in BCC. So what college would I go to? Stockbridge School would have cost almost $20,000 a year. My father, a Navy fighter pilot in the Pacific in World War II, had had a stroke a few years earlier, and it was clear he couldn't help to pay for my college education. So the decision seemed easy until I got a call from one of our neighbors. A parent of one of my friends, Ruthie Holmes called me and asked me to come see her. If you knew Ruthie and you're a kid, that could be pretty scary. <laughs> right, Frank? <laughs> I couldn't think of anything I might have done to get me in trouble, so I headed over to her house. And she asked me what if I was planning on going to college, and I told her about my options. But I couldn't afford Stockbridge. Then she said, well, if you want to go to Stockbridge, we put some money aside for your education. We meaning her and her husband. And they had their own kids to educate. It took me a minute to comprehend what she had offered to me. And I said that the offer was very generous, but I didn't know how long it would take me to pay them back. And then she said, well, we don't want you to pay us back. You think about it and go talk to your parents. Let me know. Now, obviously, all the way home, I was talking to myself, trying to figure out what to do and what an opportunity it was given to me, how lucky I was to have grown up in such a neighborhood, surrounded by so many caring, supportive people. So I talked to my parents. Obviously, they were surprised, and I, in the end, I thanked Ruthie but declined the offer. Why did I pass on an incredible opportunity? I had been told by more than once that I wasn't smart enough to go to college, and my grades certainly didn't dispute that fact. I didn't want to use someone else's money and not do well. I didn't have the confidence to take their money to pay for college and not be able to pass my classes. So I was off to Bristol Community College. Yes, it was the only best choice I had. When I went to get my first class schedule here on Ellsbury Street campus, it was a nice new campus, uh, I found out that all my classes are on the Driffy Street campus. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days, right? Just two blocks from where I work now. Uh, I had classes every day of the week. That was a problem because I had to work at McCourt's. And I couldn't afford the tuition if I wasn't working. So I went to see my guidance counselor, and for the first time I met Bob Bosco. I also noticed my math class was listed as high school math. I, ex I explained to him my problem, and he fixed my schedule so my classes were Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That took care of work. On the math class, after a long discussion about my grades and explaining that my high school math class started at 6.20 a.m., remember I'm not a morning person, uh, he agreed to let me take college math, and if I didn't pass it, I'd have to go back and retake my high school math class. The pressure was on, 
but if he hadn't offered that opportunity, it would have taken me three years to graduate. I took him up on his offer. My first week at school was a little overwhelming, lots of books and reading, didn't have all of that in high school. Uh, so when I had a break, I would go to the cafeteria and study. And the second day I was there, this guy walks over to my table, takes my book, and my, uh, I'm reading in my book bag and walked away. My first thought was, is this what it's like to go to school in Fall River? <laughs> he said to me, you're not allowed to study in the cafeteria. I hadn't heard of that rule. I asked him to return my books and he said, we need a fourth. Now I was really confused. I asked a fourth for what? And he said, pitch. So the really embarrassing part is, I had to ask him what pitch was. <laughs> he said, it's a card game. And for some reason, he still wanted me to play. And he told me he would teach me how to play. And I never studied again in the cafeteria, thanks to Eric LePage. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. The next time I went to my math class, I was sitting in the front row, and Eric sat next to me. And from then on, we studied math together, most of the time at his house in Fall River. And with his help, I passed my classes, never having to repeat high school math. I always sat in the front row of my classes. Maybe I had learned something from my eighth grade teacher. I learned how to learn at BCC. And with the help of so many of my classmates, they became lifelong friends. Eric, Terry Hannon, Steve Gavir, Bob Gorvin, Mike Sylvia. When we graduated from BCC, some of us went to SMU, some went other ways. But I was able to join the SMU theater company, known as Smutco, for anyone who remembers that, and spend time with my uncle, Angus Bailey, who started the theater program. And over the next two years, I finished my bachelor's uh, in uh, finance degree. In my first year at SMU, my parents sold a home, and I was on my own, and I had to take out a college loan to finish school. But I received a four-year college degree that I could afford. And when I graduated, I swore I would never take another final exam again. In September of 77, I got a job at a local insurance agency for Sandy Smith, uh, with Sandy Smith, uh, a neighbor while I was growing up. I started by learning the business of claims. Then he told me I needed to take some insurance classes. Well, where could I find a class in insurance? Who wants insurance, right? Where did I go? BCC nights. This time, the class was at Elbury, Ellsbury Street, and yes, more final exams. After 10 years, Sandy helped me purchase my own agency, and he financed the majority of the debt, and I took a bank loan for the down payment. The loan officer was Bob Horn, a high school classmate. At a small office on Palmer Street, and for 10 years, there were two or three of us that made up Insured Agency, Inc. It was a lot of work, but we managed to grow, and then we got together with Bob and Chris Hadley and became HIG, and Tom Cody joined us soon after. Now there are 20 of us, and I have to thank them all for their hard work and support so I can be involved in all these organizations. Without their help, it doesn't happen. So thank you. No matter what board or committee I was on, we always talked about education and how important it is to a community. The real question was, how can, how can business help educate our children? It never seemed like we could help enough, and it was very frustrating for the business leaders in our community. When I received a call from Kristen Pavo in 2012, she said, Nick Christ, right, you too, <laughs> referred me to her, and he said I was interested in helping with the education in Fall River. She was starting a charter school here in the city. Would I consider joining her board of trustees? She promised it would not take a lot of my time. <laughs> Kristen's very hard to say no to when it comes to educating the children of Fall River, and I agreed for a couple of reasons. On every board or committee I've served on, I've met so many wonderful people. I've learned from them and built so many cherished friendships, and two, it was a chance to help educate young people. I know how education opens doors for so many, in jobs, quality of life, and the opportunity to earn a living wage, as did for me. I think I'm a perfect example of what an education can do, and it was an opportunity to pay it forward for all those people who supported me with my education never asking for anything in return. I said yes, and the journey with Argosy Charter School started. I met so many wonderful people who have served on the board with me, the staff, the school who worked so hard, and the parents and scholars at the school. It's been an incredible undertaking. We have a dual enrollment curriculum. 
our freshmen and sophomores have already earned 350 college credits towards their education. Who do we have that dual enrollment plan with? You guessed it, BCC. When our first graduating class gets their high school diplomas, all of, most all of them will have the opportunity to have a year's worth of college credits from Bristol. We want to give the scholars at Argosy the confidence to know that when they, get, uh, when they go to college, they'll pass their classes. There are so many teachers and guidance counselors who had a positive impact on my life in Swansea, here at BCC, my ENT instructor, my flight instructor, who's also here. Um, I wish I could find him and thank them all. I told you about my eighth grade teacher. Her name is Diana Grady. I can thank her because she's here tonight. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> She's still working in education, educating young people, and I never thought in eighth grade that we, we would be fellow trustees on the Augustry Board of Trustees. How cool is that? <laughs> Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. How great was that? Let's give our another round of applause for all our nominees here today. This is great. So clearly, as we learned here today from the stories that you've heard, and as you heard here earlier, that we have over 35,000 alumni here at Bristol Community College. Um, earlier, someone said that's a great story that I heard from you, Steve, but you know what? Everyone has a story, as you heard here today, that we share with Bristol Community College that has helped us so much to learn and grow. And it is so important, whether you're an alumni, a volunteer, wherever the case may be, those who are in attendance here today, share the successes, share these stories about Bristol Community College. That's how we spread the word with good people like you in this room. So tonight we've seen that clearly Bristol Community College provides a low cost, high quality education that sets the students on their own personal path of success and fulfillment. Bristol is a great asset right here in our neighborhoods and across Bristol County. There are so many people to thank who support our efforts and our missions as you heard earlier from the staff, from the alumni, from the volunteers, from the students, from our delegations who was always up at the State House and working so hard and sharing these stories and the successes of BCC. While well, we thank you very much, please join me in, again in congratulating all our awardees here tonight. They deserve a well round of applause.